Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 101 for Wednesday, June 8th, 2016. Kids Device Management. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you fresh, high-quality ingredients to cook delicious meals with simple step-by-step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. This week's episode is going to be a little bit different. You see, I'm a dad, and I struggle with how much technology I want my three- and my six-year-old to be exposed to. On one hand, I'm passionate about technology, so I totally understand the pull of it. My kids obviously share my interest in technology, and I would never want to squash that drive. But on the other hand, there's just a lot more to life than simply technology. So while I'm okay with them having some time with screens, I don't feel comfortable letting them live their lives staring into those screens, at least not yet. And definitely not at such a young age. So I have to find solutions that help me do the things I feel I need to do to put their usage in an area that's responsible, in my eyes, as a parent. I spent some time over the past few weekends getting my home devices in shape for kids' usage, and today I'll share what I did. It might not work for your situation specifically, but it could spark an idea that you might have for your own children's devices. So let's dive into a project, how I set up my home devices for my kids. We have two Nexus 9 tablets at home. My wife and I kid ourselves into thinking they belong to us, but in reality, only our kids use them with any sort of regularity. We've set up restricted profiles on each system. This keeps our kids locked into the tablets with only the apps we've set for them to have access to. Here's how you do that. First, on any device running Jelly Bean or above, I'll go into Android system settings and then into users. Here, I'm going to add a new user and go through the process of entering their email account info to sync the account to this profile. I actually have a special account for my kids that I use here, and I make sure to deactivate things like location tracking, Google Now, and other stuff that tracks usage. I like to go into the account settings and then turn off sync for anything my kids won't need as well to avoid random notifications for things and, you know, unnecessary battery drain. Now, Nova Launcher is a great way to keep the kids' profile focused on only the stuff that applies to them. Nova Prime is actually essential for what I'm about to do. With that app installed, I'll go ahead and tap home and assign it as the new default launcher for the tablet. Then I'll go into Nova settings and then app and widget drawers settings. Now find that little selection down at the bottom, the hide apps section, and you select all the apps that the kids should not have access to that will hide them from them. These will all be completely hidden from view so you don't have to worry about them discovering them. I'll look at the app drawer now and it's nice and tidy and looks great. Now onto the home screen. Delete any icons to apps that they shouldn't have access to from there. I can even delete that Google search bar up top, which can be an unwanted portal into other things. If you don't want them searching the internet, you might want to get rid of that. Uh, Now we have a pretty great starting point for a kid. It's restricted to the apps that I like in this case. But here's another super important part. If they're going to have access to the Play Store for installing apps, uh, I'm going to have to go into the Play Store and make some settings changes. I'll go into the settings to find parental control. Here, I'll assign a pin. This is for parental access to these settings, so I can go in at any time and tweak them. And then I'll go through each category that I'm given so that the Play Store only ever shows content that's age-appropriate for my kids, from movies to music to, of course, apps. 
As well, I'll go ahead and make sure that all purchases require authentication, and that'll keep them from racking up charges on my card without me knowing, you know, until it's too late. And now I have a profile that is a great starting point for adding games, access to movies and music, and whatever else I've cleared specifically for their access. Nova Launcher is awesome for this kind of stuff. Find it for free and for $4.99 for the Prime upgrade in the Play Store. My children love to listen to music, so I wondered what it would take to convert an old phone into a single purpose music streaming device. I can get most of the way there yet again with, you guessed it, Nova Launcher. Here's my device, fully reset and synced to the Google account. The only app that is installed outside of the stock apps here is Nova Launcher with the $4.99 Prime upgrade. I'm going to begin tweaking things by first tapping home and then selecting Nova Launcher as my default home launcher. Next, I'll head into Nova settings, then into desktop settings. I'm going to go ahead and max out the icon size to make everything a little bit bigger. And you can also remove the labels in icon layout section if you like. Now back out and into the gestures section where I'm going to set up or at least make sure that there is a gesture set to launch into Nova settings. Here, it's set to two fingers swiping up. Why is this important? Well, I'm glad you asked. We're gonna be getting rid of all other apps, including the shortcut to Nova Launcher settings next, stripping it all away so that only the Play Music app icon is showing. First, go to App and Widget Drawer Settings. Now down at the bottom is the Hide Apps area. Here I'm gonna hide everything, and I do mean everything, except the Play Music app. Now back out to home and I'll go ahead and place the play music icon on the home screen so that it's there for me and then remove literally every other item on the home screen. Also, I'm going to get rid of the Google search bar up top and yes, the app drawer button is removable inside Nova Launcher and that's great because now I can drop that play music icon where the launcher button used to be. So everything's looking good now, but it's kind of bare. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Play Music Player widget, and we'll be sure to check the box that asks if Nova can create widgets and access data with them. That's very important. I also like to add the Play My Library widget and have that tied to Play Music for a nice big graphical layout of the latest playlists and listens. I'm going to also launch Play Music and go into the settings there to turn on the setting that blocks songs with an explicit tag. And now I have a device that is limited to music, except one key element, that notification tray up top, which can be a portal into other things you don't want your children to touch. I'll go into System Settings and then Security and make sure that screen pinning is turned on at the bottom. And now when I hit the multitasking button, I can go to the play music card and tap the pin that appears there. The notification tray goes away, and the only thing that device can do now is be a music player. Everything else is hidden. If they manage to get to the home screen for whatever reason, say they reboot or you let them out and you forget to lock it up again, all they have access to at that point is the music stuff that I have on the desktop. Older kids will get wise to this stuff maybe, but it's great for the younger set. Again, you can find Nova Launcher in the Play Store for free with a Prime upgrade for $4.99. And there we go. I have a few tablets that keep my kids locked to the things I want them to have access to and a device that they can use at any time as a music player. I really want them in, you know, to enjoy music, so having a device that isn't connected to all things internet but still gives them the ability to play a song on a whim is just what I was hoping for. That way, they aren't tempted into the hypnotic world of the internet when they pick it up to listen to <clears throat> Miley Cyrus. Uh, so I've solved a few needs, but I'm still missing a big component, and that is keeping tabs on their usage. I'll get to that after this break. But first, let's take some time to thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that's Blue Apron. Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone while supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standards for ingredients, and building a community of home chefs. For less than $10 per serving, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with fresh, high-quality ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Every meal, 
comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients that can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Customize your recipes every week based on your dietary preferences, and you can choose a delivery option that fits your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. Blue Apron delivers to 99% of the continental U.S. Blue Apron sets the highest quality standards for their community of over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. Seafood sourced sustainably, beefs raised humanely, chickens are free range, pork is raised naturally, and regenerative farming practices are used for produce. Now, by shipping the exact amount that you need for the recipe, Blue Apron is actually reducing food waste. You eat it all. Whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron brings you the very best. Blue Apron not only supports a more sustainable food system, it supports happy and healthy families. Did you know that cooking together builds strong family bonds? And research shows that Blue Apron families cook nearly three times more often. New recipes are created every week by Blue Apron's culinary team, and they are not repeated within a year. You can cook meals like spicy Korean rice cakes with snow peas and pea shoots or sweet chili ponzu catfish and green beans with coconut ginger rice. All of these make me realize I'm really hungry right now. Uh, You should check out this week's menu and get hungry as well. Get your first two meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash twit. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Visit blueapron.com slash twit, and we thank Blue Apron for their support of Android App Arena. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. Okay, now it's time to add an app to each device that will literally give me a window into them uh, from wherever I happen to be at any time. It's this week's big app. So I have these devices all set up for their specific use cases. My work is not done, however. Monitoring how they use these devices is key to knowing whether my mechanisms are actually doing their part. It also happens to be, in my opinion, the role of a responsible parent because, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the internet that I don't necessarily want my children exposed to. Dinnertime Plus has two basic functions. First, I'll install it on my phone. I'm going to set it up to be a parent's device. This is essentially my window into how my kids' devices are being used. With that in place, I now have to install Dinnertime Plus on each kid's device. In doing so, I'm going to grant the app device admin control, meaning the app can't be deleted or stopped unless it's done from a parent's device. It overrides everything, and the kids have no control over that. Very effective control, in other words. As I continue, I'm given a pin that I can input into the parent's device. This actually locks the kid devices to the parent's device, and the connection is then made. Now, as my kids use their devices, I can monitor in real time what apps and games they're using and for how long. I can do things like set time limits with weekdays and weekends given different settings if I'm a little more relaxed on the weekends, let's say. And if there are apps that don't count against the time limit, uh, I can go ahead and set that in there as well. I can also set scheduled breaks or just tap to take a break at any time, complete with typing my own little message to appear on their screens when the break is introduced and they're going to be forced to put down the tablet at that point. I can go in remotely and deny access to any app that happens to be installed. I can do this from my device, which is really nice. And in reports, I can actually see which apps they spend the most time with. Dinnertime Plus is free, but for a $3.99 in-app upgrade, you get a lot of really handy features. Up to five different children's devices can be synced usage reports for the past seven days, a total of eight scheduled breaks, customized timeout warning messages, and more. It's really essential. Find Dinner Time Plus in the Play Store now. Now, when it comes to parenting, everyone has a different level of comfort for all these things. No one solution is going to work for everyone, so I understand if you do things differently with your kids, maybe some of this stuff doesn't necessarily apply to you, That's quite all right, but this stuff has helped me be the kind of parent I want to be, and if that's helpful to you, then my job is done. Until next week. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can post them to the subreddit. That's androidapparena.reddit.com. The show plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific, following tech news today at twit.tv slash live. And the new episode will appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page. That's twit.tv slash arena. 
All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me once again today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena. Yeah.